in there. I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I had to give my daughter's help. Oh, no, it's <laughs> fine. It's fine. It's fine. Trust me, I understand. Hey. It's fine. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Okay, okay. All right, then. Well, before we start the episode, I just wanted to tell you, I really appreciate you coming on to the podcast, sharing your story, because I know it It really takes someone that is in a really good place as far as to try to share something share something so personal. So I just wanted to tell you, thank you for coming on the podcast. Oh, no, thank you for having me. Okay. Okay, so before we get into your story, you know, uh, like, tell us a little bit about you. Um, What am I? I'm 40 years old. I'm a mother okay. of two. Okay. Um, what else? I like to, I don't know. I just love life. I can say that. Love life? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you got any hobbies? Hobbies. I think mine is probably makeup and just, okay. being, yeah. <laughs> I know it's kind okay. of crazy. <laughs> okay. So I'm guessing you watch a lot of uh, like makeup tutorials and stuff like that on YouTube, huh? I do. I do. You do? Okay. Okay. Do. Who's your favorite makeup YouTuber? Ooh. Sound like you got a list. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, What's I your really go-to one? one? Your go-to one. When you wake up in the morning, which one are you watching? I think her name's Jackie. Jackie? Really, okay. Yeah, she's really cool. Okay. 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 Okay, now, I know you said you was 40, correct? Yes, just turned 40. Okay, so at what age did you become paralyzed? 27. 27. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's been 13 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now, did you know anybody who was in a wheelchair? I've never previous? met. No. Mm -mm. Oh, oh, you never met anybody in a wheelchair. Nobody. Like you growing up, you anybody? always seen no. You only seen like older people. You never really thought like mm -hmm. you know times have yeah. changed. So I never, mm -hmm. I never. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know for me. I grew up in, I had somebody in my family who was paralyzed. Oh, really? So, yeah, so that's that's how I was kind of able to, I would say, just kind of see it firsthand, kind of, because we would go over his house sometimes, and, you know, we would hang out, with, uh, like, right. he would come to family functions and stuff like that, so, yeah. Oh, okay. that's cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so, what would you say that your general perception was of people in a wheelchair, since you only really thought that old people was in wheelchairs because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that that's most of us. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I thought like maybe they're you know, just getting older, couldn't walk, yeah. couldn't take care of themselves. I never really thought of anything. I'd just be like, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine. And yeah. then happens to you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, did you know anything about like spinal cord injuries like prior to your incident? No. No? Never. Mm -mm. And like to be honest, I would say that that's that's most of us. Um, you you really don't learn about the information until you're just thrown into the mix, and you have to mm -hmm. learn it because now you're you you're the one that actually ends up with the SCI injury. Mm -hmm. So, True statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, what level is your injury? I'm a C three to C seven. C three. So I'm a quadriplegic. Okay, you're quadriplegic. So, mm -hmm. so for the people out there, is that higher or lower? It's a higher level. Okay, higher level. And then also for the people out there, what is a quadriplegic, if you don't mind us asking? Uh, I feel like we can't open and close our hands. We okay. need more assistance than others. Okay. Um, I mean, you can still move your arms. Mm -hmm. You just don't open and close. For certain people, mm -hmm. um, I think every quadriplegic is different, though. Okay. I can say that. Yeah. In what way? There's some that are in incomplete quad, which okay. you can't move anything. Ooh, um, okay. Some quads can open it, like open their hands more than others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe okay. they have more filling than others do. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me a long time to kind of know a para from quad. I was like, okay. oh, I'd love to be a paraplegic. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Okay. You can just do more for yeah. yourself, I feel like. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, now, when you say that you can't open your hands, like, how does it actually feel? Like, do your hands feel, like, numb, or does it feel like, how does it feel versus how it felt before, if you don't mind us asking? Um, I can't really feel on the top of my hands, but I do everything like everybody else does. Okay. They're just contracted. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, like a fist. Oh, some, okay. some quadriplegic hands are open, 
and some mm-hmm. of them are closed. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's just more on the numb side. So it's mm-hmm. like you can feel half of it, kind of. I can feel like maybe a little bit. Okay. Just, yeah, it's crazy. Okay. Okay. So you, you said that you can move your arms, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So when it comes to moving your arms, can you feel the rest of your arm? You just can't feel your hands. I can feel all my arms just on the top of my hands. Wow. Yeah. So that's certain, like, there's, it's like certain levels mm. of your function. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So is it certain, is it certain areas on your arm that you can't feel or is it just the top of your hand? Just top of my hands. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's giving me a little bit better insight because I would say for us paraplegics, we really don't really get into the whole quadriplegic aspect because we're paraplegic so it's like we kind of really i would say just just not even really worry about it you know kind of just like an sci injury you don't really learn about it until it happens you exactly 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 okay okay so getting into the day your incident how was that day going for you so i was going out with my friends we were at a at a club we're waiting for a car in valet these Mm -hmm. girls they were arguing wasn't sure what they were arguing about Okay. She gets in her car, she drove off slowly, came back around, hit five of us, and I got hit the worst. So I flew on the windshield. When she hit the side of the pole, I flew five feet and head first and then landed back on my head. And yeah. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. I didn't. I, I, so yeah. <laughs> I'm taking it all in because I really just didn't expect you to say so much so quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so there was an argument going on in the ballet, and the girl who was in the argument, she turns back around, and why does she hit y'all? Is she arguing with somebody in your group? or is she... well, I had no idea who she was. I had no idea who the women were or what they were even talking about, pretty much. It was just cold. We were just trying to get home. So, That's- so you're literally, you're the true definition of an innocent bystander, pretty much. Mm-hmm, pretty Good. much, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. So at the time, at the time, are you unconscious or are you conscious? I was conscious. I was still, I was trying to get up and they were telling me, you know, be still, be still. Oh. Like, I just want to go home. Yeah. Okay. So at the time, so at the time everything happens. What can you feel and what can't you feel? At that time, I couldn't really feel anything. I just could. I just remember I just couldn't move. Mm. And I remember a guy came running over there. He's like, "Ma'am, you know, stay still." Yeah. Now, yeah. Okay. When you said that you was trying to get up, how was you trying to get up? Like I saw, I was laying back on, on yeah. the back of my head. I'm just trying to like, mm. like just trying to like get up. Like trying to yeah. move your body and nothing would move. Nothing would move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you want to, like, what's crazy is I would say for the most part, all of us are really trying to get back up because I was trying to get back up too. It's just, I just couldn't feel my legs, but I'm, but I'm, I'm actively, I'm trying to get up. I really don't even know, know what really happened to you. Oh, oh. yeah. Like I saw you. I YouTube. seen the video. <laughs> I see. Yeah. It's yeah. A story. I saw it's your a YouTube story. and I just, I think mm-hmm. I remember you guys were. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. He's married and you guys are trying to have a baby. Mm-hmm. And you guys were like gone for a while. So I really didn't mm-hmm. know if you guys broke okay. up, we stayed together. Okay. Okay. That's all I remember. Yeah. So I remember okay. you like way back. Okay. 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 Look, I sent you the video. Okay. That's yeah, more that's what <laughs> okay. What okay. Okay. So at the time that you land on the ground, how long do you feel like it takes for the ambulance to get there? I don't even remember that part. Cause I had woke up three days later. That's when they told me what had oh, happened. Okay. So, so pretty much while you were on the ground and the guy saying like, he was like, no, like you know, be still. And I'm like, yeah. well, Hey, can you call my boyfriend at the time mm-hmm. and tell my kids I love them? And that was it. Mm. Damn. And so after that, you don't remember anything? Mm-mm, no. Okay. Okay, so you say you woke up three days later. How was that like? I was waking there? up, and my whole family, my mom, uh, my boyfriend at the time, mm. my grandfather, and my sister, and my brother. Okay. And they were like, you know, you've been in an accident. I'm not thinking of nothing, because there was tubes mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. So. Okay. 
Okay, so when you wake up, are you in pain at the moment? I don't really recall that. I just remember that I felt my forehead and there was just like stitches everywhere. Yeah. Okay. okay, so during the incident, what all happened besides the spinal cord injury? Like, did you like... I busted stitches? my forehead Okay. and then my spine had stretched. So I didn't break mm. my spine. I had no broken bones. So mm. that was a that was a plus. Okay. Okay, so pretty much the only thing that happened to you was just your spine stretching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I guess because I'm kind of curious about that. Mm-hmm. I've, I've I've never heard of somebody's spine stretching. Right, me either. So- like I, I know it's crazy. So I have a plate from C3 to C7 to hold okay. the spine together. Okay. So without that, there'd be no Tiffany. So mm-hmm. it's like I didn't break. I guess it just stretched, I guess. That's what they. Yeah. That's what I was told. Mm-hmm. So. And what does the doctors tell you as far as like, I guess like recovery? Like, do they tell you that Well, they gave me three years or... to live. That's just how bad it was at the time. And so it's been 13. Yeah, but that that was hard. Three years to live. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Just how bad it was, and I was on a breathing machine, and I wasn't getting any better at the time. Okay. So yeah, it was it was horrible. Mm. I don't wish that on nobody. And do they come in the room and they tell you this, or how did they they actually break that news to you? The doctors came in and told. They informed all of us. You know, and I'm just like, I'm not really understanding because I'm only 27. I didn't really know what a Mm -hmm. spinal cord injury was at that time. So, yeah. Okay. How does he actually say it? Like, do you know the words he said, like verbatim or? Mm -mm, No. No. Some parents were just like, well, they only gave you three years just because of how bad that I was getting at the time. Okay. Okay. And when you said that you wasn't getting any better, I'm guessing at this at this time that you're in the ICU, correct? Or no? yeah. Okay, so yeah. how long was you in the ICU for? Whew. I want to say two weeks, mm-hmm. and I was on facilities after that because I didn't get out of the hospital until like a year, like a year and a half. Yeah. So you was in a hospital for a year and a half. A year and a half, and at facilities, yeah, that's what I want to say. Yeah, for a year and a half. Like, I had to fight bed sores mm-hmm. at the time. I was too scared to turn. Like, I didn't really, like, they didn't have information to do like they do now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I was the trach, the breathing machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was okay. it was horrible. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really hear about too many people that was on the trach. I was on the trach, too. Oh, were you? So, yeah, so I got the scar right here. Oh, yeah, me too, yeah. Yeah, so. Trust me, I I definitely yeah. understand. I definitely understand what it's like to be, you know, on a trait. But the people out there, they don't understand it. So if you can kind of tell them how, how it's like to be on a trait, do you mind telling them? All I remember is something I depended on, because even when it comes, like even a cough would be hard to cough. They had to come mm-hmm. suction you out, and even though it wasn't that bad, but I remember panicking all the time. Me too. I thought I couldn't breathe. You know. And people mm-hmm. tell you, you've breathed in 27 years. It's like, it's totally different. Totally yeah. different feeling. It is. Like, just, uh-huh. th- just thinking about it, it gives me the chills because yeah. I feel like that was, I feel like that was the worst part about being it in the was, hospital. It was. was it, it really yes. was. Couldn't and eat, like, couldn't do anything. Yeah, couldn't do anything. So how long mm-hmm. was you on the trick for? Uh, Six months. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, six months. So, mm-hmm. so you couldn't eat anything for six months. Mm-mm. I had a feeding tube too. Yeah, yeah, that was horrible. Yeah. Okay, so for those of us watching, what does it do to you mentally to not be able to eat anything physically for six months? At that time, I don't think I thought about that. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to go home and you know yeah. live the life that I thought I was gonna. Yeah. That I had, you know, because yeah. I had I had two kids at the time, and they were my son was three, and my daughter was seven. Mm, okay. So 
So so yeah. You're a young kid. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, did you allow your kids to come see you in the hospital? At that time, it was too bad, and they were too young mm-hmm. at the time. Yeah. So no. Okay. Not until I went to the facility, mm-hmm. then they didn't understand. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So so, how long does it take for you to go to the facilities? Is that after the year? The year no, no, no. That or? was no, no. That was. See, I see you hospital. I want to say like three weeks after being in the hospital. Okay. And so after that, I was in the facility. Mm. And those suck. Okay, so while you in the so while you in the hospital, do they ever get you up in a wheelchair? No, I was no, not that time, no. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you don't get into a wheelchair until you get to the facility, correct? Mm-hmm. And that was like after a year of being in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's because the bed sore that I was having, it was like stage four at the time. Mm-hmm. And so it, it just wasn't getting any better yeah. until I had a flap done. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't understand that either. Like it saved my life. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Is I haven't. I haven't spoken to anybody who's actually been in the hospital for that long. Yeah. So. Well, then I had gave I, up too. I thought I wasn't getting any better. Yeah. So I was just like, whatever, you know. And do you know why you aren't getting any better at the moment? Like, 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 as far as them saying that you're not getting any better, what's actually not getting better for you? I don't think. I thought I was that strong to get any better. Mm-hmm. Mentally, physically, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, like, you know, your friends come and, you know, you think you have their support. They're going to mm-hmm. be there. And as months and months goes on, they start to disappear. And some mm-hmm. family disappears. So you're kind of stuck with the caregivers that are at the facility yeah. become your friends. Okay. Okay, so you said that you had a boyfriend at the time. Did he keep coming? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. I mean, he's mm-hmm. the father of my kids, yeah. Yeah. But in time, it wasn't the same. You know, I mean, I wasn't the same woman that that he knew. Yeah. That was walking. Okay. In which, like, at the time, it's understandable. Like, mm-hmm. some people can handle it. Some men, I mean, some people can't. Mm-hmm. It's understandable, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay, so when you say that uh, that family and friends stopped coming around, do you feel like that they stopped coming around because you wasn't getting any better? Or what do you think led to them to stop coming around? I think just life, life. working and, yeah. you know, yeah. everybody has their own, you know, family and Mm-hmm. Things they, they have to do. And everything yeah, like and it's you know it's totally mm-hmm. different. Yeah. Now, now, do you feel like that they should have made an effort to come? Because we've all been in a situation as far as to where you know, not as many people come around like a few months after your injury. So mm-hmm. I could definitely kind of relate. So. Do, do you feel like that you felt some type of way because they wasn't coming around as much or like, do you feel like that you would have just wanted them to like, kind of like reach out or like something like that? Like, how do you feel about that person? I think reach out. Cause I don't think I would have ever did that to her. Oh, so especially it's... somebody that okay. like you were with almost every day. And, mm. and even the girl that I went out with, she was yeah. there all the time. Mm-hmm. So oh. we're still friends to this day. Okay. So you, so you're speaking about somebody specifically. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Okay. 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 So do you know what ever happened to the lady that hit you? She had got, what, two years. And at the time they were like, well, do you want her to stay in more jail time or not? And I said, no, because it wasn't mm-hmm. going to change my situation. Yeah. So I, I let her go. Okay. Now, was you able to file like some type of civil suit? Absolutely. I... Thank, I mean, thank God it happened that way at the casino. Mm-hmm. Thank God it didn't because she had no car insurance. The car wasn't hers. What? Yeah, so I sued the casino because they gave her a car key while she was intoxicated. Mm. So, 
So that was like, that was definitely God right there. Okay, now, now, are you able to talk about that at all? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Because I feel like that this is something that we don't really get well, to I, dive into. I saw into. your post too. Yeah, I well, was yeah, like, no, well, he did not. No, well, it's because sometimes I have people. I'm speaking. <laughs> I speak, I'm speaking specifically to the people that contact me wanting mm. to share their story and then we set everything up and then I write them pretty much the time that the podcast is supposed to start uh-huh. asking them to send me their email and then they tell me oh I, oh, I contacted my lawyer he said not to get on the podcast well I would have felt better if you would have told me whenever you spoke right. to the lawyer you know what I mean versus me waiting I think waiting. that's how you said it I was like oh okay you could have well, worded that a little differently, you know, a little yes. nicer. Yeah, you, you know what? Yes, I could have. Okay, so but for those of you who don't know, more. exactly. For those of you who don't know what she's talking about, I went on my Instagram mm-hmm. and, matter of fact, let me go on my Instagram right now. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me go read it. Let me go read it. So I was like, is he talking about me? Because I would no, never. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, it's just. When I reach out to somebody, if they if if they come back to me and they tell me that hey I can't do it because of legal purposes, I I, I totally understand. Right. But like you're reaching out to me, I'm setting I'm setting up a time a day, so I'm pretty much setting my schedule aside. Right. You know, scheduling everything I got to do around that time. Right. So 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 if I set up and everything, I'm already ready to go, and then <laughs> I'm thinking that we're about to start the the podcast, and you tell me that. You know, I can't uh, talk about legal stuff. Okay. Well, no, no, I, I can't do the podcast at all because of legal stuff. Oh, it's well, then what's like, the point of contacting me then? Exactly. Wait, so that, my breath, okay? That's but what I'm saying. Take, some people could take that a little wrong. So you have yes. to understand there's a way of saying stuff. You're right. Just you know saying. what? I ain't the best communicator. You're right. I could tell. <laughs> I was like, ooh, okay. okay. All right, so this is what I wrote on. Mm -hmm. So this is what she's talking about, you guys. I said, I hate to do this, but I have to. Do not contact me asking to get on the podcast if there are legal issues going on presently. It's a waste of my time going through the trouble of setting up everything just to be told right before I spoke to my lawyer and they advised me not to speak about it. And don't leave out, you uh, capitalize that too. Oh, uh, (laughs) (laughs) which one? Which part? Maybe the first how you started off. No, 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 I didn't capitalize anything. Oh, you didn't? Oh, no, okay. I didn't. I didn't, but I did put the exclamation point. See? So it's like I'm yelling it. Yeah. So, okay, sure. okay. You know what? I could have worded it a little bit better. You're right. Hey, to people out there. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. You, you know what? I ain't the best communicator sometimes. I, I need to kind of work on that. that. Oh, yes. How I you know? know? I was just I about to say that. Do. I, I was just about do. to say, <laughs> but that's women in general. Women in general think that guys ain't the best communicators, though. To you be know, honest, some women aren't. You know, some men don't think women are the best communicators. I think it goes oh, both sure. ways. It does go both ways. It, look, know, women, certain women and men are complete so. opposites. All right, Ooh, we're yes, just complete we opposites that attract and. Uh, it's all good. It's tough. <laughs> it is for sure. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, since you can talk about your legal issues yes, and everything that yes. happened. Give us some insight on it because I said we don't get to hear the side a lot. All right. You know, so I was able to get a lawyer. Okay. And they followed me from the facility, from the caregivers to my dad at the time. So, um, mm-hmm. When I got better, I went to stay with him. So they followed okay. me out there just to show him, to show if it went to the court, how, mm-hmm. you know, how I got up every day, mm-hmm. my children, just my life. Mm-hmm. How it was then? So okay. in case, in case God, you know, forbid, I would have died, then it would have been a, a strong case for my children yeah. at the time. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't understand nothing about lawyers or mm-hmm. the situation. Like I didn't want any money because I didn't under, you know, I didn't, I didn't mm-hmm. know at the time. Okay. So yeah. Okay, so, so pretty much. Oh, so, yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry. So go ahead. Oh no, no, no. you good? Trust me, my bad. I'm so sorry. No, no. So. We had a deposition, okay. and so the people that she had hit, they were trying to get like millions of dollars as well, mm. and they didn't go nothing to what I've been through. Like mm. none of them got hit the way I did. Yeah. So I was like, no, we're not giving that. No. Yeah, but but <laughs> it would have been good for them to get a couple million. All it right. Probably would have. Look, if it they would have got look, if they would have got five, look, if nothing happened to them really, and they would have got five. 
you would have got 50. Okay. Exactly. I, 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 I did really good though. Okay. So we settled for 10 million, but it lasts me throughout my lifetime. So I don't, you don't get to like, oh, let's go buy a Porsche or let's yeah. go buy this. No. They break it down. It's, it's in a special needs trust. Okay. So it's for, for like caregivers, like stuff like that. Cause that's the last mm. for the rest of my life. Okay. So yeah, some people think like, oh, you get all this money. No, it's not like that at all. Mm. It's like you're the richest broke person ever. That's what I tell myself. That's crazy. That's crazy yeah, that you put it, it like is. that. Okay, it so is. they awarded you ten million. Okay, so how? So so do they break it off like to pay you at all, like each year? Yeah, every year on the trust you get, you get a payment. So it's like you have all these expenses that cover. Like I was able to buy a house, a okay. car, like stuff like that. I was able to do before mm-hmm. we had to put it in the trust mm-hmm. because my biggest expense was yeah. caregivers because yeah. I do need twenty four hour care. Okay. Yeah, so that's the biggest expense. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, does your insurance actually pick up any of it, or or no. does it all come out through the casino, through the money the that casino. they awarded you? Mm-hmm. Okay. This is this might be a weird question. No, go ahead. Um. Well, it's 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 not weird, but it is a little weird. Are you banned from the casino? No, I don't even go there. So it happened in Las Vegas, Nevada, where I stay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I you see, I didn't know, I didn't know that. Okay, I'm thinking that this happened at just like a local casino. Okay, so 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 are you so are you allowed to tell us what? Yeah, yeah, it's at Sam's Town Casino. Okay, and it's on the east side, Mm -hmm. and so yeah, that's where it happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you located in Vegas? I am. Yeah. So I've been out here since I was 16. Okay. And then when I got hurt and got better, I moved back to California. Okay. Then I went back to Vegas. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now, have you ever wanted to go back to the casino? I did that, one time. Just to kind of like, just, I don't know, I guess like kind of like take it in, see the scene. I did think. one time and I never went inside and that was it. Mm. Okay, so how would like the accident back. happen? Mm-mm. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, have you ever spoken to the lady that uh, that hit you? She's never no. Mm-mm. If you could speak to her, would you would you say anything to her? Heck yeah! No, I was kidding. Probably mm. yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, I think so, just to bring me closure. Mm. You know, I want her like to physically see like what she did. So, so, so if you could, so, so, so if you could speak to the lady that put you in the wheelchair, what would you say to her? Good question. I get that. Like I have drone home intoxicated before, Mm -hmm. not to the point I want to kill somebody. Like why, like what was your main reason of doing that? Mm -hmm. You know, like what was just. And I think at the time they said they were arguing over shoes or a comment that was said. So okay. it's like you wanted to risk her other people's lives because of a comment somebody said. Mm-hmm. Like I would never understand that. Yeah. Do you think you could ever forgive her? I think I did once I didn't mm-hmm. press more charges for her. Mm-hmm. Because she could have got a long time, but. Do you know how long she was facing? I don't. I think it was like 10 to 15 years. Mm. And she only got two. I mean, that's that's attempted murder right there. It is. Well, yeah. You know, my whole family was mad at me. Which I, I get it. I totally understand. But the situation that I was in was not going to change. Whether she was in jail, out of jail, it's not going to mm. change. Do you think, looking back on it, do you think that you would do it the same exact way again, like over again? Or do you think that you would ask for her to get more time? I think I would do it the same way. Do it the same way? I do. Mm, okay. My family? No. <laughs> no. They definitely want attempted murder. They definitely wanted a lot more, but they weren't mm. in my situation. Yeah. You know? 
That's understandable. Yeah. Okay, so you you said you was in the you said that throughout the hospital and then the facility that you was in there for like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do they tell you do they tell you anything about getting better? Like, like what do they specifically say to you about? I guess about your injury, like going into therapy, like what do they tell you about it? Like once they notice that you're able to like move your arms and everything now, so like what are they saying at that moment? There's a life besides being in that bed. Like you have yes. children, you have your mind, you can talk, yeah. you know, you can, mm -hmm. there's a life. And yeah. when I had met these two ladies named Tammy and Kim, mm -hmm. they changed my life. You know, they got me up. I mean, I got to, yeah. And I want to say that I think it was my children. I mean, my daughter coming in is like, mom, everybody has their mom but me. And I want to say like two weeks after that, I started participating in everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you said that, it's a life besides this bed. Do you feel like that you just wasn't doing anything to help yourself get better? I wasn't. No, I wasn't either. Trust me. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I definitely understand. And when you and when you said that comment, when you said it's a life outside this bed, that's what I really had to realize in order to want to do better for myself because I was literally just sitting in the bed all day. Mm -hmm. Like it, like I would be waking up at six o'clock in the afternoon. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean? like it, like it, like my schedules was off. It was weird. Like, mm -hmm. like I just wasn't, I just wasn't doing anything to better my situation. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I feel like that we all have to come. I like, we all have to have that one thing that just hits us. And for you, it was your kids. We all have to have that one thing to where it just, it, it kind of motivates us to actually get up out the bed and want to start doing things that will actually be beneficial to our care. Like, you know, learning mm -hmm. how to cath and bowel care mm -hmm. or, you know, getting into physical therapy. Because I know for me, I, yes, the people at the hospital, yeah, exactly. The people at the <laughs> hospital hated me. The physical therapist hated me. Because I, I mean, feel that, like men are probably more grumpier than women are. Yeah, I probably, but then when yeah. you, yeah, you probably was. But when your mm -hmm. whole, like, when your whole function is gone, yeah. nobody can understand that, you they know. They can't. They can't like, oh, end. you can do this and mm -hmm. you could do that. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I like, I, de I definitely agree with you because the physical therapists, they don't like, they don't know what it's like that to be in know. a wheelchair, you know? And I'm like, that's you, you had to go to school and get paid to do this. You exactly. don't want to be here. Like, I don't want to be here either. Exactly. But then it's like, okay, well, let me stop complaining. Like, yeah. at least they're trying to wake me up and mm -hmm. give me about the bed because they don't have to do that. I mean, but they coming in because they on a the schedule, you know. They, they are, you know, I too. know. Yeah, <laughs> trust me, and and I ain't gonna all, look. I just had a little problem with with mines. All right, I, like they did some things I ain't really, I ain't really like, but but I mean, but they did help me out, you know. But I mean, yeah, but I found, you know, I don't know, like they lied a couple times. They always you know, lie. Like, oh yeah. Or are you gonna get a little bit of function back? It's like. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so when I said that they lied, it was mm -hmm. the very first time I ever got in a wheelchair. Very first time. All right. They take me outside. All right. And do you know like uh, like the little cracks that be in the sidewalk? <sighs> right. So I hit one of those little cracks in the sidewalk, and at that time I really didn't have no core strength, so I'm like wobbling and stuff like that. I almost fall. Like Did I literally almost fall. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. They called me. Oh, okay. okay. But they said so I tried to commit job. suicide. Yeah, Did but they you? said I... Yeah, no! Oh, so who, you just bumped Who won't, who won't try to commit suicide falling on their face? You know, at this point, you don't ever know. I'm just saying. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, Maybe yeah. you were just that me at the time. Maybe you just thought like... Yeah, nah. It I was, don't see that, though. Yeah, but like I said, who who who, who going to commit suicide by falling on their face? No, like, that's a that's a tough one. Yeah, so that's that that's a little gripe I had with them because after that it was yeah it it was yeah, See, it, it was bad for them. Yeah, I did, I did, I did only because I I was really just going through a lot at the moment. I was and how old were you at the time? Twenty two. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. 
So it was just, you know, like I had a lot going on, you know, for my family to like, you know, like dealing with the military. So it was oh, like, wow. yeah, so it was, it was just a whole bunch of I get politics going on, a lot of lying going on too. The hospital, they be lying. Um, All the time. Yeah. Yeah. So they it, it just a lot of stuff. Okay. So, okay. So from, from the time that you actually start trying to do better for yourself, how long does it take you? How long does it take for you to actually leave the hospital from there? After, because I had to go to Haberberg Chamber after mm-hmm. I got the flap done. Okay. And um, that was another six months. And then I was able to go home. And I want to say going home was like the scariest because I was so used to the caregivers. I was used to like yeah. all around. It was like my first time being at home. I didn't know how to be a mom. Like I didn't, you know, like you're starting over, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, it, it was tough. That was tough, but I was I was so grateful that the caregiver that I had at the facility, I had paid her to stay a week with me to show my parents, you know, how to deal with me at the time. Mm-hmm. So that was that was cool. Okay, okay. So, are your parents your caregivers now? Oh no, 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 no. Okay. Do you mm-hmm. still use professional caregivers? Mm-hmm. Okay. I do. Okay. Well, I have like a a family member, yeah, but. I definitely have professional caregivers. Okay. Okay. Been through a lot of caregivers. Yeah. Mm. Now, yeah. do you feel like that you've been through a lot because of you, or are you just picky? I want to say both. Because this. I want to say very both. Personal. I can't. I can't put one or other because it was definitely. It was me. If I didn't like some, I'd fire that person. Mm-hmm. And then as you get older, it's like, wait, Tiffany, like. You have to treat people how you want to be treated. Now, it's not like I didn't, but if I didn't like a certain thing back in the day, no, mm-hmm. I wouldn't accept now, it. Now, do you feel like that you was a little bit tough on him? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, if you don't mind me asking, do you prefer a woman caregiver or a man caregiver? I, you know, it's so crazy. I've only had three men ever work for me my entire 13 years. Okay. It doesn't really bother me now that I'm older. Mm-hmm. As long as they do the job. Yeah. I want to say. Okay. okay. I don't know okay. if you had caregivers or not. Mm-mm. No. No. Well, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so it really doesn't matter to you just as long as they're able to get the job done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Now. From the lawsuit, from the time of your incident to the lawsuit, how long does it actually take? Cool. That was like a year and a half. We okay. settled pretty fast. Okay. Okay. Now, when you say that they settled, the casino settled or? The casino settled outside of court. Uh, so okay. it wouldn't go public. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's still a big casino. Mm-hmm. I'm not okay. sure if you've been to Las Vegas before. Oh, like 20 times. Probably oh, really? more. Yeah, I go all the time. I go Ooh, all the time. I gotta stop by. I, you know, I do. And all, I love Vegas. All right. I, I like, I love Las Vegas. I like, I've been to like, I've been to most of the casinos. Like, I tried to say like almost every casino on the strip. Like, but like, Once I don't know. Here, I just like the vibe. Like, yeah, I did not want to. I did not want to move to Vegas. I wanted to, but then I thought. See, about I don't it, like, gamble though, so it's kind oh, of a big thing okay. to me. So you see, you see, and it's like I think it's like you live anywhere. I, I'm not sure where you are at. Hmm. But like, where do you live? Uh, right now I live in uh, California. Okay, so I lived in mm-hmm. Sacramento. Okay, okay, I said mm-hmm. Bakersfield. Oh really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know yeah, about so... Stockton, Modesto. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. and, and I moved here. I moved here from Atlanta. So I it's, cannot it's wait, wait to visit there. Oh my God. Don't say my daughter actually wants to live out there. No. She's gonna no, be moving tell back her to no. Cali. Don't she's say gonna be that. Move, she's gonna be moving back to Cali, trust me. Trust me. You think so? hmm It looks so like family orientated. It looks the I food looks family. good. Yeah, but is she gonna be moving there with family? Yeah. She is? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, see, I, I'm not sure. I've never been there. No, the I, mean, South I can't talk about. It. I, I like. Were you it's born a love hate relationship? There? No, uh, I was born in Virginia, but I grew up in Georgia. Um, I moved there when I was 14. Oh my 
goodness. I mm-hmm. always hear good things about Atlanta. The food, the atmosphere. Now, the weather. Okay. Mm-hmm. Food, atmosphere. Okay. Yeah, food, atmosphere. But at the same time, remember, it's the South. All right? Yeah. It is the South. So it's, a, it's like you kind of stepping in the time machine a little bit. Well, yeah, because my family comes from mm-hmm. uh, Jackson, Mississippi. So oh, I can cool. only imagine mm-hmm. how Georgia is. So, yep. yeah. Okay. Okay, so you said getting out of the hospital was kind of scary, right? You was mm-hmm. you was a little uncertain. Okay, so when you finally get home, how does that feel for you? Like when you finally get home and you know you've accepted that this is gonna be your life. You say you moved back in with your parents, correct? Yeah, my dad at the time. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So how how accessible was his house whenever you moved back in? So he was able to get. His office, he had uh, had it all set up for me. There was a Hoyer lift from my mm. bed and to the, uh, to the bathroom. He set it all up really, really nice. So there's okay. nothing I ever wanted or needed. He had everything. Mm. Okay, so he set up it. Okay, so mm-hmm. he had everything to go whenever you got there. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that made it a lot easier. It, it did. It did. Yeah. We didn't really understand yeah. what was going to happen or mm-hmm. what my needs were at that time. And I would say one of the biggest things when it just, I guess, comes to like the house being accessible is for me, it was the shower. It's like the shower can be just the most difficult thing. If it's not wheelchair accessible, it can be one of the most difficult things to try to get in and out of every single day. And then it becomes a burden because mm-hmm. because it's a task to get in a shower. Mm-hmm. But like, I was really uh, blessed. Yeah. Okay. Probably okay. So, was. okay. So he made you like a rolling shower and everything. Yeah, so the horror lift was from, it'll come down from my bed, it'll pick me up, and it would press the button from the bed to the shower, to the mm. to the bathroom, okay. and it'll put you down to the shower chair and lift you up. It was really nice. It was? Mm-hmm. Okay. And did he pay for all that out of pocket? <laughs> no. Okay. Actually, we were able to get, uh, what was it called? Victims of Crime. Oh. So they were able to, you know, wherever, wherever I was moving to at the time. That's mm-hmm. what help paid for it. Okay. 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 All right then. Okay, so do you have any sense of direction whenever you go home as far as like what you want to do in life? Mm-mm. No. I didn't. Okay, so what did you do for that time until you actually realized that you know what I need to be doing something? Like what'd you end up doing? What do you mean? Like when I got to my dad's or at the yeah. hospital in general? Like when you got to your dad's, like, uh, like was you like in the house a lot? Did you not want to go out or like? Oh no! Um, like how was he, it? He always kept me moving. We always went to different places, like okay. San Francisco, or we always went to different places. Okay. It was never like sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Mm. Okay, so when you went back to your dad's house, you went back to California. I did, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you was in Vegas, and then once you got to the hospital, you go directly to California. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So you was, so you was on the move a lot. Okay. So do your kids come with you? Absolutely. Yeah. They okay. were there before I got there. Oh, so they were there like a month before I got there. Mm-hmm. So they could start school out there. I just really wanted to go home and be a mom. That's all I really knew. Mm-hmm. Cause I was, you know, I was gone for so long. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a... That's a long time to really. That's a long it time is. to be in a hospital. It is. It really in a is. facility is. It is. Like, it is. I think it, my biggest thing were UTIs at that time too. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the older I get, I feel like the more I get them. Mm-hmm. So catheters really suck. Mm-hmm. And what? And do you know the reason why you're getting UTIs? Well, I have a super pubic catheter. Okay. So it's like, it's always an end wall catheter. Mm-hmm. So I think like every person is different. Okay. Like I have tried everything to think of. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I don't know. Just, okay. It just sucks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm so, not sure if you get UTIs or not. I get them maybe like once a year, twice a year at the most. And um, like my doctor just said is probably just comes from like bacteria that's pretty much just like on mm-hmm. the head pretty mm-hmm. much so he just 
he recommended me to use like the iodine and stuff like that. So I use the iodine like before everything, cause cause all my stuff is supplied by the VA, so I'm able to get pretty much like everything like every month. Yeah, I do. I'm very yeah. blessed for that part too. Yeah, exactly. Through insurance. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I guess for us is. I guess we kind of get lost a little bit because everything is kind of supplied for us that we really don't kind of understand what it's like to not be able to have insurance to afford this stuff. Because I know mm -hmm. some people have to pay out of pocket. You know, yeah. somebody told me once that it costs around $500 a month for him to actually be paralyzed because he didn't have any insurance. He didn't have but no what about insurance. medical or what is it? Medicaid. He was, he was an illegal immigrant. Oh so, God. yeah, so so everything he has to pay for out of pocket. But he said that, you know, he was able to find, like, a mentor. And a mentor, he just so happened to be in a wheelchair. And I actually did I actually oh did a podcast God. with both of them. Yes. Oh, you did? Yes, I did a podcast with both of them. So the mentor, he's the one that had the fight league, which is called, like, the Thump Yard. And they do, like, uh, like boxing, like, events, like, uh, pretty much, like, back like backyard, like, brawls and stuff like that. Like, oh, that's boxing so gloves. cool. Yeah, uh, so he was able to, you know, take him under his wing and pretty much, kind of, you know, schooled him a little bit, you know, put some money in his pocket, like, Aww. help him out as far as job. Yeah, you know, what and is that? that is because, you know, unfortunately for him, it could have went a little left, you know, it, yeah. especially if he didn't know somebody that was like that or, you know, he didn't take him under his wing like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, I wouldn't even, I, like, I really can't even imagine just not being able to, like, just really have insurance to really help you out with this type of stuff. Because mm -hmm. I know it gets so costly. And then right now, catheters, they going up in price. Now, everything you know? is going up in price. Everything exactly. is COVID. Exactly. And, like, as of right now, too, they having a shortage on catheters. So I get all my stuff from the VA each month. And I normally get the ones that you got to kind of, like, self-lubricate. But they've been sending me, they've been sending me, since they've had a shortage on those, they've been sending me the uh, the already one, uh, the, the ones that are already kind of lubricated. Which is kind of more of a convenience, but for some but reason I, I don't particularly like particularly when you're like, yeah, you yeah, and like then, it. you know, like when you got a thing, you kind of stick to it, kind you do, of, you, you know, do. you know, for so, but sure. I'm, yeah, but I'm kind of getting used to these ones to where it's just, I'm realizing how much of a big convenience they are. <laughs> so I, li I like them, but then I don't okay. like them at the same time. So mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know, but Understand. like I said, like I said, I, I really wouldn't even, I wouldn't even want to know how much it really costs. You I know. Mm -mm. You know, it's, especially right now, because I think those catheters even cost more than the other ones that I was. I would think it would be more expensive because yeah. already lubricated. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, ooh, okay. It's crazy. Okay, so do you ever get a job? I have not worked. No. You haven't worked. Is it because you don't mm -hmm. want to? I wouldn't even know what to do. Yeah. At home business entrepreneur type, you know, work from home, you know, something like that. Start your little business, you know, little, little e commerce, something, you know, just something, just something to get you kind of, you know, a little motivated Maybe about like stuff. exercise because I love to work out. That's like, Ooh, I love okay. working out. Okay, now, okay, now, when you say that you like to work out, like, how does working out go, uh, uh, like, go for you? Like, uh, like kind of tell us about that. Like, standing frame, I'm so big on that. Mm -hmm. I think and everybody like should be, more. yes, because mm -hmm. as you get older, your bones start to contract. You lose your bone density a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's when you lose muscle, yeah. Matt, you know, and, you know, we don't use the muscles that we yeah. used to use. Yeah. Because being in the wheelchair, it's like, okay. And now that, as you know, the older you get, everything changes. Yeah. You know, so st I'm so big on setting frames. I really mm -hmm. am. Yeah. I you know, just work it out in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it's like 10 I, minutes a day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, there's some I, people I, that cannot like even what, stand up. Exactly. I feel like no that's blood something that we need issues. to bring out more. You yeah. Know, like, uh, because, unfortunately, you know, when you're in a wheelchair, you tend to hold in them calories a little bit more than everybody. Yes, you, it's hard yeah, to use that stomach, too. Hey, oh, trust mm -hmm. me. Trust me. I know. I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> it's good, but maybe it tell you. It's hard to lose it. It is. It really is. You know, so <laughs> I, I feel like that that's something that I need to bring to the channel more is really just getting active and kind of like trying to motivate people from that aspect. Because yeah. I feel like right now, this would be a good, like, motivational <laughs> tool. You know, I got this, you know, I'm getting a little weight. And I feel like, I'm you know, sure. people see me do a weight okay loss journey. You. Yeah. You know, but if people see me do, like, a little weight loss journey, I feel like that that will kind of motivate that'll them. That will motivate so, them. Yeah, exactly. Especially being a man to a man. Yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because we tend to you know, we don't burn them calories as you know as fast as we would if we was just walking or just doing exactly. like daily activities. So exactly. like you said, you know, like stomachs get a little bit bigger. Yeah, just okay. you know, there's no muscle there no more. So you know how that goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you wanna know what I feel like that I feel like that when it comes to like most people, I don't think that they're really necessarily afraid of the gym because I've worked out with a person trainer. I've actually lost weight. I've I've gotten fit, you know. But I, look, I bought a grill. I started cooking, and it it it's went okay. downhill from there. All excuses, look, no, but that's why I, I bought a grill. That's where it went downhill. I bought a grill, and then YouTube has all the the greatest recipes ever. And they really do though. exactly. So and, and, and then when you I, know how to cook. Ooh. He's, hey, look, yeah. I, I learned how to cook through YouTube, and everything I make is amazing. So it's like you gotta eat it, exactly. you know. You know, so that's where things went downhill for me. But I say for the most part, people are afraid of the gym because they just don't know what to do. I you know, agree. A lot of people just don't know what to do when it comes to going into the gym. So imagine mm-hmm. if you don't know what to do, and then you're in a wheelchair. It's it's just that it's makes tough. it ten times worse. Some people get embarrassed, like yeah. you know, it, it's tough. It is, yeah. Yeah, but you just got to go. You just got to go in and trust me, mm-hmm. you, you'll find something to do. And, you know, mm-hmm. look, sometimes you got to put your pride and ego aside. And I say that when it comes to being in the wheelchair, that's something that you got to do quite frequently. Don't be afraid to ask people in the gym, hey, man, what are some workouts that, that, you, that you think I can, you know, do from a wheelchair? Or I guess just ask one of the personal training people up there, like, what, what exercises can I do from a seated position? True. You know, so... You know, I, feel you like know, I think it's a little tougher now because yeah. with COVID and yeah. some wheelchair people are scared exactly. to even want to go outside. Like me. I go, I'm kind of scared. Are you really? Not, not really. Not really. I be traveling, but I'm scared too at the same time though. It's like I anybody anybody could take me out, you know? It's like, yeah. you know Have you caught COVID? No. Uh, 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 yeah, I did. It was horrible. Yeah. <sighs> How was it? Was how was having COVID you know, and being in the wheelchair? Like, how was like how? Like, the how, only problem how issue feel? I had was the coughing, because mm-hmm. you know we can't cough. Okay. So I don't have those muscles to be able to cough on my own. Mm-hmm. So caregivers had to come and like literally push my stomach for me to cough. Yeah. Other than that, I was okay. 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 So when it comes to being a quadriplegic, what what would you say is the worst part about being a quadriplegic? My hands. Your hands? My hands. Mm. If I can have my hands, I will be okay. Yeah. If they can open and close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so so when you say that you like, you know, makeup and doing your makeup, I can see you got your makeup done right now a little bit, mm, you know. Thank you. <laughs> do you do it yourself? I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, mm-hmm. now, was that a hard task learning how to do your makeup with your hands being closed down? Like, was that like a lot harder or like, how did that go for you? Like, how easy was that? I, I guess I transitioned because I'm pretty sure you used to do it before versus yeah. learning how to do it this way. Like, how was that for you? Was it frustrating? At first, heck yeah, it was. But I was like, you know what? Nobody's not going to do it the way you want to do it. Exactly. So I just started just doing it. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of stuff I couldn't do on my own. Mm-hmm. Like, like your parents had to help you or your caregivers. Like, yeah. yeah. I guess so. it's... You know, for somebody who's not in your position, is it's kind of hard for us to really get there because you don't really think about the little things. Mm-hmm. And you know, like 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 for everybody that's in a wheelchair, people who's not in a wheelchair don't realize that just getting up and going to the bathroom is just. Something I'm telling that we, you, you know, it's just <laughs> something that they would never realize. Never, how, like how amazing that that would feel to just be able to get up and go to the bathroom because they're mm-hmm. not in a position where they can't do it. Where, mm-hmm. where their body is not really allowing them to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I guess, from my aspect, it's just, it'd be hard for me to kind of put myself in your position when it comes to the little things as far as, like, just opening up a little makeup container. Yeah, or, like, picking up the remote or, you know, just yeah. making a peanut butter jelly sandwich or something, you know? Yeah. It's, like, the little things, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and the little things... But that's exactly where for everything, mm-hmm. but... It's just mm-hmm. the point of you don't have to get that tool to pick yeah. that up. You're able to yeah. still grab it. Yeah, and you wanna know what I seen something. I seen something on Instagram where this guy like made like this device to like grab things for uh for I, I think quadriplegics. It was like like 
he made like a little device that like slips onto like most like I guess like cups or beer bottles or like just little stuff like that. So do, do you feel like it's a problem whenever like it comes to like you bending over grabbing something off the floor? Hey, can I'm like, excuse me, Anna Cole, can you come help me? And I'm like, okay, I'm coming because I don't have patience. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I know. I'm saying that, but you have to have patience, but yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, you will find patience. You will find patience from this wheelchair, but yes. because you know you have to start relying. Not that you have to start relying on people, but it comes to a point where you have to rely on somebody else. Yes, you know, and you gotta and you gotta be patient enough to where now you really have to kind of understand that you're on their time now. Yeah, so you like, really are. You know, so I guess that's it's something that it's really hard to kind of. It's really hard to understand whenever you're just thrown into something. You know, because it's not something that you really want to learn, but now it's like True. you realize that, oh, I got to learn it. I got to learn patience. True. You know, so. Okay. True statement. Okay. Okay. So are you doing anything right now? Like, are you working on anything currently? Like trying to do anything? Like write a book or something like that? Like, are you working on anything like post your injury that you mm-hmm. will want to, you know, share with the people? I'm really not. It's so sad. Okay. I know. It's so mm. sad. It's not. It's not. Maybe you just haven't found that thing yet. But, I don't think I have. Mm, and I think yeah. sometimes you get tired of explaining your story because mm-hmm. it's like, well, who's going to want to listen? Or, yeah. But you never know. Yeah. Do you feel like people ask you that a lot? Like, oh, my God, like, how you got into a wheelchair? Yes. Is it like, yeah. All the time. <laughs> Damn. And, you know, I don't even, like, I, it used to bother me all the time mm-hmm. when I was younger. But yeah. now I'm just like, hey, you know, yeah. got hit by a drunk driver. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, do you ever sorry. feel like that you would want to write a book? Maybe. Mm. You know, maybe. Okay. I think it's a lot. Yeah. And you know what? You know what I think about? I think about my kids. Like, would they want to have to read that experience all over again? Yeah. You know, because it's not just my life; it's their life too. So I think I think I just think about that. But maybe they're they're grown now, so mm-hmm. maybe it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Would you want to write a book about your story? Yeah. And yeah. I, the only reason why I would, like me personally, I wouldn't know. But See? would I but 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 hold up, but but I tell you that I wouldn't want to, but I would do it just to help somebody out there. Like okay. because I understand that. It is is bigger than me, all right. Like as long as I can get the as long as I can get the information out there, I feel like that that's kind of what's really starting to matter to me because you know I got paralyzed ten years ago, so the information oh, not not that it was not that it wasn't out there, but it's not like how it is now. Everybody's just sharing their story openly. Everybody's on social media. You can see all the people doing stuff. Yeah, you know, you see people on YouTube. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it, like it wasn't it wasn't like that, mm-hmm. you know. So. Look, times have changed, right? And I and and I feel like that if you're not looking for the information, you're not you're not really gonna find it. But if the information is plentiful out there, maybe you might run across it. Yeah. You know, because I because I, I know for me, I wasn't looking for the I wasn't looking for any information. Like I didn't I didn't care to either I didn't care to talk to people in wheelchairs. I didn't care to look up. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I just <laughs> I, I guess I would say I avoided people in wheelchairs too. I don't yeah. know. I guess because I, I guess agree. mentally, 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 I just. You are super young, too. Yeah. I, it, I guess mentally it was kind of tough for me to really kind of talk to somebody that's in a witcher because I because I would really just probably see see myself in them like b- because they're in a the witcher. So I would I would automatically feel like, oh, I like I have to relate to. I have to relate to that person. So whatever I see is what I feel like that people would see when it comes to me. Oh, you know, so I feel like that that was probably like my biggest problem, you know, because, you know, like, like when it comes to being a witcher, you're going to deal with insecurities. Yes. And yes. And I feel like that that's just, look, it is what it is. It is. Yeah. It is what it is. So yeah. it's just something y'all deal with, you know, insecurities, little patience, you know, True you know? Statement. you'll learn it. You learn okay. over time. Yeah, oh, trust me. But I still I ain't mastered it yet. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you know, it's frustrating. I ain't gonna lie. 
you know, we might burn bridges sometimes or, you know, mm-hmm. come off the wrong way. But mm-hmm. it's, you know, for the most part, it's kind of frustrating sometimes. And I feel like yes, that, it is. I feel like that people don't really kind of understand it. But I don't know if it's really for them to understand. You know, people you know, are never gay unless they've been through what you've been through. Yeah, and that's what you do. Nobody will ever walk, will ever walk in your shoes. Mm-hmm. I don't care yeah. what you've been shot, and people get shot in different places. You know, yeah. people get paralyzed different ways. Mm-hmm. It's a no. true statement. True statement. It, and I feel like no injury is really the same. Yes, somebody no. might be the same level of injury, but I feel like no, no injury. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Mm-hmm. And everybody goes through their own trials and tribulations when it comes to it. Everybody has their ups and downs. Trust me, you're going to go through them. You mm-hmm. know, and that, and that's what I try to tell everybody. You know, it's just, you just got to find something that motivates you to really get up out the bed. Like how mm-hmm. you said. I get up every single day. I get up exactly. every single day. Exactly. Every I, day. Exa- I don't even know the last time I even stayed in the bed. Oh, me either. Oh, exactly. Like, <laughs> I have to get up. I have to do something. Me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. so. So, so like for me, I'm always working on something. I'm, I'm, I'm always doing something like YouTube, outside of YouTube. I'm always doing something. I like to stay active. Pretty much, is like I don't know. I guess I just like to be active. I don't, know. I, I don't ever want to just sit there because when you sit there, and, you know, you got time on your hands. You, you'll get you really there got time. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, <laughs> you, you'll take your mind to places it shouldn't be going. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, your deep dive. Oh my God, how much longer I got left to live? You know, yeah. like, oh, is it, is there a shot clock on my life? You know, yeah. little you stuff, just little stuff. The craziest stuff, it, yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. Exactly. So I try to recommend for everybody to just kind of, you know, just stay busy, just find something that you like to do, find hobbies, anything. It could be anything. Just anything. Yeah, so I just try to recommend for people to stay busy. So, okay, I think so what you're said, doing is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you don't mind me asking, how'd you come across my channel, the podcast? Like, how'd you come across it? So actually, the twins that you Ooh, just did an interview. Yeah, okay. so one did a podcast with me, and mm. not the quadruplegic, the paraplegic. I cannot think of her name. They're so Nicole. lovely. There you go. Mm-hmm. I think they're lovely, lovely young women, and mm-hmm. their story was sad. So when I see yeah. them, I'm like, I think I've seen them on YouTube before. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wait, yeah, so you was on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I think... No, not that I think. You and your wife were on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, oh, then you guys disappeared. And yeah, that's mm. how I came across you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so so what, was you just scrolling on YouTube? Or like, how did you come across the actual video? Uh, on hers. Oh. She on, had you on her story on Instagram. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, they're okay. really dope girls. They're mm-hmm. like so dope. Okay. So did you reach out to me? Yeah, I did. Okay. I was like, hey, that's just, who did, that's just yeah. for the people out there. Okay. Oh now, yeah, yeah. So I was like, hey, we're doing interviews, and I would love to share mm-hmm. my story. I want to know because I'm curious about that. Mm-hmm. What made you want to share your story? I always get asked to share my story okay. and how I overcame who I am, and mm-hmm. how. So I think that that's the reason why. And I'm such a shy person, so I'm like, yeah. you know what? Just do it. What can you say no? Okay. Mm-hmm. That's Did you feel like I would it. say no? I could have been busy. Could have, you know, you probably have months, weeks. You never know True. till you try. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And th- and that's what you have to do. <laughs> Look, you can't be afraid of failure. The worst somebody can say is no. That's what I that's say. You bad. can just say no or, exactly. hey, I have an open up in like August. Okay, I'll wait. Mm. You know, just, <laughs> you never know. You could be booked. Mm. You never know. Yeah. Podcasts are hard. Yeah, yeah, they are because you, mm, uh, you got to kind of be prepared a little bit or, you know, but like for us, I don't really have to be prepared as much because I really went through what you've got, what a lot yeah. of them have actually went through. So a lot of the things I would just really just be going back to my care or how I was, like, as far as like the incident. You can relate. The high, That's exactly. Right. And, and I feel like that, that sometimes when it comes to people in, in wheelchairs that actually do interviews, it's really hard for them to relate to the interviews to where the interview goes, how you would kind of want it to go in a way mm-hmm. because a lot of the times whenever somebody interviews us i feel like they portray us how they want to portray us they're mm-hmm. not going to portray us like how somebody would who actually knows what we go through you know like they're going to use the worst 
like the worst punchline ever that sounds the most horrible, you know, like, like, you know, and it's just like, damn, I, was, like, I wish they wouldn't have did it like that. Or, right. you, know, you know, like, you see me, I'm going to say something that's going to like maybe grab your attention, but like, I'm going to know what's kind of like, like TMI, like what's too much, like, you know, like, yeah. like, like as far as like, okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel comfortable with somebody saying this about me. True. You know what I mean? So, True. you know, like, uh, like I have an interview coming up with somebody who I ain't gonna say his name, but he, um, I wrote him and he's kind of like, I, I, I get, he kind of like famous because of the incident. Cause he got shot by a cop and that's how he got paralyzed. So, and, and, and it happened recently, but I told him, and when I reached out, I really just asked, and like I said, the worst he could say is no, you know? And I was just like, mm-hmm. you know, I told him, I was like, I would, you know, I, I would love to sit down and do a podcast with you. And I feel like that, I feel like that one of the best things that would really, I say like, like resonate with you as far as like the podcast would be, I'm in a wheelchair as well. And I can kind of understand, what you know, what, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And I feel like that anybody else who's interviewing you, because he said he had, an interview that was coming up with like, I don't know, I guess like CNN or something like that. But, uh, uh, like maybe like they was doing like a follow-up story. Oh, okay. And, uh, uh, Cause like I said, the case was actually really big. This is like right after the George Floyd thing. So his thing happened like right. At, so it was big, his was big too. Wow. Yeah. So um, that's pretty much what I told him. Like I can relate, I can relate with what you're going through. And anybody else who's interviewing you most likely would not be able to relate with what you're going through. Mm-hmm. And you know, like, like, they're really just not going to understand what you're going through. And I believe we got the same level of injury. So I oh, can't, really? yeah. So I really can't, kind of can't wait for us to do the kind of the podcast. Awesome. Yeah. I actually got to reach back out to him. You'll be good on TikTok to too, though. What, what happened? You'll be good on TikTok too. I, you know what? I'll be doing Instagram rules. I need to start doing TikTok probably. Yeah. 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 I think okay. that's where like the, the views so are. That's where I see a lot of, a lot of people in wheelchairs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I need to get there. I don't know. You know, just seeing like different, paraplegics or quadriplegics or whatever mm-hmm. okay 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 now is there anything that you want to ask me before we go ahead and wrap this up um i just say keep doing what you're doing okay and thanks for like having me on okay well look i appreciate you coming on because like yes, i said thank you i really appreciate each and every one of you guys that actually come onto the podcast and share your story because I don't even know if I'm at that point where if somebody was doing what I was doing, that I would reach out to them and tell them that I would want to share your story, share my story. So yeah, I, like, I, um, no, I, yeah, like, like that's on, like, like that's like me being. You honest. seem like a dope person. Like I, I couldn't imagine that. Yeah, but it's just like I'm not just open like that. I don't know. I, I no? maybe ego, pride, you know, just like, oh, like okay. yeah, you know, you know, mm-hmm. I'm a guy, you know, but 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 I come What's across guys, Virgo. Okay. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure we're, like, very hard to deal with. <laughs> I, I'm not really into signs. I don't even know why mm-hmm. I asked that. Just just curious. Okay, okay. Well, look, like I said, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. And I really Thank appreciate you. you sharing your story because I know it takes a lot for somebody to actually come on and share such a traumatic, you know, time in their life. Some, something, right. so, you know, personal that they've actually went through that was literally a life-changing mm-hmm. event. So I just want to tell you thank you for coming on the podcast. And thank you for having me. I had a really me. good time. Thank you. All right, Kevin. Thank you.